I'm in India and we're about to buy the wackiest Indian tech that I can get my hands on. And then we're going to test it. We're going to find out just how cheap we can get tech, but also how great Indian tech can be if you have the money to spend. With this guy. Let's start. <laughs> we are right now in Asia's biggest computer market. It's a hub for all the gadget lovers. Now, one thing I didn't anticipate is the sheer number of Indian fans who were just as keen to see what we'd find. But look at this crowd, this is crazy. And with this army, it was time to shop one. Let's say how cheap we can get a speaker. Boat was the one you were telling me about, isn't it? The speaker. Yeah, yeah. We're trying to establish if this is a real or a fake. So this is $16, basically. Because that just seems like a very high quality speaker for that price. Party speaker. Party speaker. <laughs> You're yeah. going to. We have AirPods Pro 2 here. Yeah. That's upside down, so that's not real. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> have to look at this Chromecast over here. That's not a real Chromecast. Yeah, you can absolutely tell. I have a doubt. You, you have a radar for this kind of stuff. No idea. That's yeah. perfect. This place is absolutely mind blowing. Yeah. It's an Apple Watch Ultra. Apple Watch Ultra. Look at the authenticity of the fake. It's even got real Apple style screws. So the fakes have got better. Yeah. Right now, at this moment, there are about 100 people outside the store. This is the one. Apple won't give you more than a single strap for free, and that too is a very basic one. Right. Here, you're getting seven straps. Seven straps. <laughs> Meanwhile, in India. As of now, it's $25. Let's see how low we can go. So I think we should try that power bank over there. It looks like a like a knockoff version of one we have. Another thing you notice they do a lot here is they unbox everything live right in front of you so you can tell that it actually is what you think it is. It has a built-in torch as well, if I'm not wrong. It's pretty interesting. This one store has every single gadget. And also, also the repairing at the back. And the repairing at the back within like an eight meter length have some very authentic looking Apple cases in the corner. So a normal Apple case would cost you $50. So 500 pound worth of stash. Oh my oh God. God. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> it's got all the hallmarks of Apple. It's got the Apple font. It's got almost like a fake peel sticker, but it is an Apple. Be very curious how cheap we can get this. $1.50. That's how cheap. They've got a dual wireless microphone system. When I shop back home, a price is a price. Yeah. When a company tells you it's not the case here. No, so sometimes it is, to be honest, but not every week. $99 for everything we bought in this shop. So Gaurav is saying it's twice the price it should be. He's trying to get it halved. Yeah. Whew. It's a good haul. We're just getting started. Mission accomplished. Part one. Part two is here. Street market time. So this is where we get the real bargains. Get that? So he's suggesting three dollars for this. Ah, Gucci. Interesting thing. Louis Vuitton, Adidas, North Face. So now it's on different phones, but sometimes you'd have a single case with all the logos on one case. I've seen that as well. That's how it's called profit maximization. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you pay. Yeah, that's how you pay. Everyone's using a smartphone. Everyone has good speeds of data. Everyone has a digital bank account. And that's how the real life is. So India right now does the most amounts of digital transactions globally. That's crazy. Back home, you don't see cases for anything but the iPhone and Samsungs. You see a Vivo. I assume that's like a Realme. There's an Oppo. Oh, oh Realme, everything. Yeah, everything. You can actually buy in India fake case to fi cases. I'm it's like a ripoff of a ripoff. We want to see like how good a speaker can sound, but costs like a couple of dollars. I just realized, look, they've got a Series 9 watch yeah. with the gesture. The gestures barely work on the real watch. Sarip, these two? 2,000. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. We'll do that. So this one QR code allows anyone to pay any time with their phone. It has a speaker. It will confirm the payment so that he knows that I have paid. That is such a good system. Yeah. India. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see what else we can get at this market. A lot of clothing. So how much would something like this be? Kitna? Three fifty. Two hundred fifty. Two hundred fifty. Nike shoes. Three dollars. So at this point, we've got a handful of very inexpensive gadgets and one suspiciously affordable pair of trainers. But I also want to make sure that while we're here, we pick up some of the higher ticket items. Okay. So yeah, Dash two. And then maybe also the projector. Spy cameras are a big thing here. Yeah. What, what is the modest way then? This is a apparently a handheld gaming console, but it's ten dollars. So this seems even better. The M8 Pro, a smart box that you attach to a dumb TV, and it's 10K Ultra HD. 10K Ultra HD. 10K. Never heard of it. <laughs> you guarantee 10K. Yeah. So okay. Yeah, right. Turns out the 10K is actually referring to the number of games, but. They knew what they were doing here. Arun, surprise for you. Yeah? Something that very rare to see now. Come, I'll show you. Straight away. It's like Gora's favorite phone shop ever. Will become yours favorite as well. Have a look at this. Oh my goodness me. Engage. No way. What is this? What am I looking at? <laughs> a call recorder for the iPhone. This is very interesting. That is absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Just like a small MagSafe power bank. No software, any call here. Oh my goodness me. What? Oh, what? 
What is that? So what do they do? Are they like indicators? It can show you like these alien eyes or whatever. And then the app, you have all the combinations. Yeah. I just need a motorbike now. Roti maker made with pride in India. That's brilliant. Make the dough, put a small amount in between, press it up, we're gonna spread it, cook it at the right temperatures and give you this as an output. I just need to learn how to make the dough. My mum will be so proud. <laughs> this is what we came here for. That was cool, but we can't forget about the Indian high street stores. So we found the official Samsung store of So it's place. a smart cafe. It's like a mini store for the experience. What would be really cool to get is India exclusive phones. What's the most impressive? M34 is the hot selling right now. So this is an India exclusive phone, Samsung M34. We'll get an M34. This is a multi-brand outlet from, let's say, Samsung to Xiaomi to Oppo to OnePlus to Realme. What would be the most iconic like Indian phone? Lava. Lava, that's a good idea. Turns out not a single shop seems to sell this Indian made lava phone. It's exclusively online to be able to make it as affordable as it can be. There must be some string we can pull. So I'll get you a lava because it's actually like super AMOLED curved screen. Let me pull that string. <laughs> and a sub to the channel would be. Majidar. 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 <laughs> that was absolutely crazy. Bro, time to raise the bar. How about we use an app to shop? We can actually shop smartphones, not delivered to you like in a week's time, but in fact, under 10 minutes. It's called Blinkit. Before you blink it, you have it. Oh my goodness me. Um, that basically sounds like a superpower. An app that allows you to order basically anything you want to wherever you are in minutes. I think we have to test it. Let's get some tech. Earphones coming to you in eight minutes, Arun. Minutes. We don't even have an address right now. They're called the Air Dopes. <laughs> of course they are. You can get a foot massager. You can get an actual massage delivered to you. For services, we have Urban Company. So like, let's say you want a haircut in the next two hours. You can book that. So as well as the Blinkit app, which is all about getting products to you quickly, this Urban Company app covers your services. You know, this is one of the coolest things about India. Because development has happened later here than many other countries, most of the population's first computer was actually a smartphone, which means that everything here can run based on apps that factor in that the entire population is using a single platform. It's incredibly streamlined. So they can, yeah, repair your house. They can even repair your car. Let's just do it then. I'll book myself a shoulder massage for when we're unboxing these products. It's definitely need that. <laughs> I cannot believe it. Foot <laughs> massage. This is the most insane merger of past and future. Your foot massage. I Honestly, what on earth? All thanks to this beautiful little bit of kit here. I think the best shopping experience, you know? Yeah, because you don't even need to do anything. Yeah. It's testing time, so let's go roughly from least expensive to most expensive. Oh, and also, Technical Guruji gifted me this. He said it's a folding iPhone. So we'll get to that when we test the rest of the phones. But let's start with the accessories. So our $1.50 official iPhone case and the $3.50 official Nike shoes. So, case and shoe. And I gotta say, Pretty impressive case. You can see the seam a little bit more than on an official Apple case, but it feels really soft. It has that same rigidity that the real Apple silicon cases do. It has the felt interior and even the engraving. I mean, yeah, it might get a little roughed up over time, but then again, this is what our official Apple case looks like after a couple of months. So I'm gonna say straight nine out of 10. The shoes are, well, definitely too small. I think in really wanting to make a sale, they just told me that the shoes will work for me, which I've come to realize does not mean they are your size. But apart from that, the quality and the finish is well beyond what I was expecting. Like even if you took off the fake Nike logo, you still can't get shoes that look like this in the UK or US for less than $4. Why are they comfortable? These should not be comfortable, but they are. Honestly, I feel like you could just get a decent pair of insoles, slap them in, tell your friends you spent 20 times as much on your shoes as you actually did, and they would believe you. And while we're on the accessorizing train, I did find this call recorder thing absolutely fascinating. So you might know that iPhones have no inbuilt ability to record a phone call. I guess Apple sees it as a privacy risk. India does not seem as concerned. And so let's say I'm having a private phone call now, or at least what Drisha thinks is a private phone call. Hello. What is your deepest, darkest secret? You didn't. So obviously this thing records my voice because I'm speaking directly into it, but for it to record the other person's voice, even if your phone is not on loudspeaker, it takes in the vibrations that their voice create in your phone and uses a level of processing that reconverts those vibrations back into a voice that you can play out loud. Let's see if it worked. It says the file was recorded on the 
31st of January 1970. What is your deepest, darkest secret? No question. Uh, but since it's just us, a couple of first number. You had no idea I was recording. Pretty impressive. Like, it's not the clearest sound I've ever heard, but given that it's converting audio that you wouldn't otherwise even be able to hear, that's actually alarmingly good. Especially since it was done through this $1.50 iPhone case, which no doubt did not help the connection. That's an eight. Let's just hope Milo doesn't catch wind of that conversation. India is really impressing me so far, but audio is probably where we're going to get the clearest idea of just how the value for money stacks up, because we have a lot of reference points. So this is basically the absolute cheapest Bluetooth speaker I've ever laid my hands on. Welcome to MC Music World. Bluetooth note. This video volume is not going to be an issue. <laughs> okay, that's a lot better than I was expecting it to be. It's a little bit muffled, but very loud and very functional. You know, like when a friend says to you, can you bring a Bluetooth speaker with you to the park so we can have a big barbecue or a dance? This very much does that. And because it's $7, you can have that without the possessiveness that comes with a product you might have spent $100 on. So I am in van. It's even got rubber feet at the bottom and it's well connected. You've got aux input, you've got USB, you've got SD card, and of course, Bluetooth. I would go as far as to say that for what it is, this is a 9.5. Now on to what should be an even more impressive audio experience at $10, the Air Dobes. Yeah, you're definitely losing yourself at least half a point for calling yourself the Air Dobes. But more importantly, this doesn't feel good. Like the colors look really muted, the logo is off center, the hinge is a little loose, the actual construction too, pretty rough around the edges. And then to finish it off, and I have noticed this on a few products out here, is that it comes out the box with scuffs. Maybe the factories here, they aren't as careful as they should be. Or maybe the packaging wasn't secure enough, so during transit it's constantly getting scraped by the cable that also comes in the box. Whatever the reason, it just feels like I bought a pre-owned product. Now, of course, making, packing, and shipping a pair of true wireless earphones for $10 in total, that is a really tall order. And you feel that stretch here. But if they work well and they sound good, I'll still be impressed. Okay, so opening them up does auto pair to your phone. Good start. Um, what? The sound is in complete contrast to the rest of the construction. It's crisp, it's clear. It's no DVLA, but I've also used plenty of $30, $50 earphones that don't sound as good as this, which is enough, I would say, to give them a seven. At the same time, though, for every person who buys a pair of Air Dopes, there's also going to be someone who really wants to feel like they have the real thing. And that is what this is for. I mean, the packaging is not the most convincing. It's very much giving off an we have Apple at home kind of vibe. But the hardware is shockingly realistic for the price. Why does it sound like I just walked into a convenience store? Oh, okay. It pairs up in the exact same way as real AirPods. It actually comes up as AirPods Pro 2. And so far, I am blown away by this. Because remember, it's much harder to make a good pair of fake earphones than it is to just make the best pair of earphones you can for the money. Because you're building around an existing set of constraints. Those fit. I want to say better than my real ones. They don't have any active noise cancellation, so we have been lied to, but, you know, the passive noise cancellation, because of how well they fit, a lot better than you would expect for $15. They even have the official Apple connection sounds. I see where the compromise is. So do you remember when Beats by Dre first became really popular and actual audiophiles were very upset because while they claimed to be the real way to listen to music, they were actually just smacking people around the face with bass. Yeah, so this is kind of like that, but times five and at the complete cost of the rest of the sound. There is definitely a type of person for whom that would be considered good sound, but universally speaking, that does kind of kill it for me. So instead of giving these something like a nine out of 10, I'm gonna settle on a seven. What's kind of crazy to me though, is that because the baseline products here in India are so cheap, it creates the space for actually good quality mid-range products for still less than $20, like this one from Boat. And I say good quality with almost no catch. This feels really weighty, high-end, not actually dissimilar from those jawbone speakers that used to be really popular. And you know, a hundred dollar plus. Uh, I think this is our massage. Hi, um, Yago Sugben? Thank you. Oh my goodness. That's actually the perfect time to get some relaxing music on. Power on. You plugged into Nirvana. Ooh, that sounds good. 
like a definite step up from the soundbar speaker we tested earlier. And also it's got to a level where it's a very comfortable bass level audio experience where nothing feels particularly missing, but also no one part of the music is overpowering the other. The only two catches I would say are that one, while it does look like a 360 degree speaker, the sound does in fact only come out of one way. And also I can see a tiny bit of paint having been scraped off. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is just because the shopkeepers are so liberal with taking it out of the box and demoing it to every single person they show it to. It's getting places that no massage I've had back home has gotten. But overall, you just don't get value like this in a typical British or American store. Eight out of 10. One trend I have noticed while out shopping in India, more so than anywhere else in the world, is people love their all-in-one products. They want to buy a speaker, for example, but they also want that speaker to be their one-stop shop for all their tech needs. And this karaoke mic is a pretty good example of that. So for starters, it's a wireless karaoke mic that you can sing into, but it's also a voice recorder, a voice changer, a nightlight. And it's all topped off with a 10 watt speaker that's not just how your voice is projected out, but also how you hear the music that you're karaoke too. Oh, and you can also choose whether you want to use the headphone jack or Bluetooth or even the radio as an input. That's interesting, just jamming along to whatever tunes are on the radio. That's quite a lot of stuff for what we negotiated down to $30. So the only copyright free song I can actually sing along to is Happy Birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. This right here this is one of the weirdest videos we have ever filmed. <laughs> Birthday to you. Oh, but also, this supposedly has the option to, in real time, be able to use artificial intelligence to strip the actual vocals from the song you're listening to so that you can just have the instrumental in the background. Let's try it. Happy birthday to you. So this is the original song. Happy Voice cancelling. Oh my god. That is an actually insane feature to have on a karaoke mic. I'm gonna go as far as to say 10 out of 10. Dipjay thingy as well, thank you so much. <laughs> the final audio product then, and the one I would actually say I'm most intrigued by, is this set of Digitech wireless microphones. Now I do realize that a microphone review doesn't sound like a party to most people, but as a creator, I use something exactly like this all the time. You see this thing? This is the DJI Mic 2. It comes in a charging case, like these Digitechs. It has two microphones, like the Digitechs, so you can stick one in a friend you're collabing with or interviewing, except this is $350. It is 10 times the price of the Digitech. So, you've been hearing this whole video what the audio sounds like on the DJI mic. This is what it sounds like on the Digitech. There's a difference, there is definitely a difference, but it's probably not as big as you'd expect it to be. Now, of course, yeah, the DJI does also have bigger batteries and some nice quality of life improvements, like a vibration motor to let you know that it's recording. But then again, with this kind of price gap, it is really cool to see how this company has still made it work, how they've managed to cram all of those essential features into a package that does still do the same job. And even though I'm sure DJI could make something like this, a simpler version of their existing microphones for like $70 that retain the same audio quality but lose a lot of the additional extra features, of course, they choose not to. Because when something like this exists, it's of course going to cannibalize a lot of sales from something like this. That kind of dilemma does not really exist in India, which is quite freeing. Eight out of 10. This one's fun. I want to make this a tradition, to be honest, where wherever we go to a different country to make one of these buying tech videos, we get one piece of tech that helps us make a local food. In Japan, we did rice cookers. In India, we're doing rotis. Now I just need to get the stuff to make the dough. Ugh. Blink it. I can't describe to you how awesome this service is. It makes the UK look backwards. So, while that stuff arrives, in seven minutes, by the way, let's test some watches. It's literally got the hand doing the gesture on the box, which is one of the headline features of the real Series 9. But I'm just thinking, the sophistication required for a watch to be able to pick up your hand gestures, surely this $15 fake isn't going to do that. Impressively realistic presentation, though. Holy cow. I mean, yeah, the box was impressive, but I thought the second I turn this thing on, I'm just going to burst into a laugh, but I am kind of in shock right now. So bearing in mind that this is a $15 watch, by the way, it comes with not one, but two sets of straps. And these straps are, I'm not even exaggerating when I say indistinguishable. I cannot tell the difference in quality between this and the real Apple strap. 
it feels exactly the same. The same plush feel, the same stitching quality. It's embarrassing for Apple, to be honest. Do you know what? Just for the lols, let's swap out Apple's real one for this one. This is going to be my new strap. So that one slides out and the new one slips in. It's even locked in place using the exact same mechanism. And tighten. That is actually such a joke. <laughs> But it's not just that. This body is actually made of metal and glass. And you see this crown? It cycles through all the iconic official Apple Watch faces. Some do look a bit rough, admittedly. But what's shocking me the most is the quality of the screen. I don't know how, but it genuinely looks like an OLED display with this level of contrast. And because of it, it achieves the exact same screen melting over the sides look as the real one. Oh yeah, and it even charges wirelessly and magnetically and comes with the charger to be able to do that. You know, there's a saying when you're out here in India, a saying that means to make existing things work at all costs or to make new things, but with limited resources. It's called Jugad. And I just feel like we're seeing it through and through with so many of these products we're testing. Just a, a real scrappiness and a desire to make the best thing that you can. And then also to sell it at whatever price you have to. Oh, and then to top the whole thing off, fake Apple rings to track your fake steps. Oh. I got an idea. So here's a plan. Real Apple Watch, fake Apple Watch. I'm gonna do a hundred steps and we'll see which one step counter is more accurate. Let's go. 100. Okay, so the real watch has calculated that as 112, which is surprisingly not accurate. The fake has calculated it as 35. Bruh. Right. So don't use it as a fitness tracker, but as a surprisingly realistic lookalike to a real Apple Watch that does tell the right time, Nine out of 10. Oh, and then if the $15 Apple Watch Series 9 wasn't already ridiculous, how about the $18 Apple Watch Ultra, which forget one band or two bands, comes with seven. Seven bands, if you were to shop on the official Apple Store, that would cost you like $350. We have effectively paid less than five. It looks like the watch is running the same software as the Series 9, but completely new set of watch faces. And I'm still taking in how they've basically recreated every single app that comes with an Apple Watch, down to their own versions of the workout regimens and breathing exercises. Wait, no. No. It's even got a blood oxygen app. You know the whole blood oxygen thing that Apple themselves were blocked from using because of that lawsuit from the company who said they copied their tech? This has the blood oxygen app. So if we enter the app, it's actually flashing at the bottom. Surely not. I know how we can know for sure. Let's try running the test while it's on a table. So running, running. Oh, never mind. It is still a very good value product for someone who just wants a watch. Oh, and a strap for every single outfit they own. In a slightly different vein then, we got that spy watch. It became pretty clear to me when out shopping that spy cameras in general are a big thing in India, and it's super interesting how they work. Because look at this watch. If you didn't know what it was, then unless you were Inspector Cluzo in another life, there's no way you would just assume it was anything but a watch. It tells the time like normal, it's got chunky metal construction. But I've been using it to secretly record this entire conversation. And for me, actually, the most surprising part of it is how decent the quality is. Like the 1080p video, the audio, considering how tiny the video camera and the microphone are, very usable. There's actually one more thing to this. If you look closely, you'll be able to see three LEDs in a triangle around this watch face. Those are infrared lights, which means that this watch camera can see in all lighting conditions, even in pitch black. Let me try and show you. Right, let's see how that turned out. Oh, and you know how they've hidden the USB port? So if you keep rotating the crown on one side, it comes out to reveal it. It's such a tight fit. It's almost like a feat of engineering. Slightly weird bringing all you guys into the bathroom with me, but this is a particularly dark room right now. I can barely see anything. So it came in credit. Wow, that is cool. I can see this being a part of a proper surveillance arsenal. Okay, so roti ingredients are all here. So a traditional Indian roti, you can actually make with just two ingredients, flour and water. So you just form a mound of flour, pour a little bit of water on, get your hands dirty. Bash them together with your hands and you get your dough. And as soon as you have your little dough ball, if you want to, you can put a little bit of oil on there. This is what my mum does, I asked her. Moment of truth. Blech. Open it. Oh, can we just close my problems? Yay! It's a dark looking roti. And so one classic thing that happens when you cook roti is, is they puff up as air starts to enter on the inside. Pretty impressively non-stick surface. Then what takes this from practical to treat 
is ghee, which is essentially heated and clarified butter. God, look at this. May I put a little too much on there? Let's load you up. Good looking bit of roti. It's a little bit crispy on the outside, soft, chewy on the inside, but very buttery all around. Mm, I'm gonna actually eat a lot of that. Give me like five minutes. Mm. Now, just before we get to the phones, which is definitely the thing I'm most curious about, given that India has its own entire mobile subclimate, I think it's time to make an India-style TV setup. Okay, let's do the next few together in one go. So the Chromecast is not super convincing based on how it's packaged. It feels cheap and light and, well, knockoff, because it is. But like a streaming device at $8? I can kind of see how that's possible, but a handheld gaming console at the $10 we bought it for is almost confusing to me. Like $10 for a screen, a chipset, controls, battery, speakers. Who's making money from this? We've got the foot massager, which while my eyes are gaming, is what my feet get to experience. And that poor guy who manually cycled this thing to us. I mean, the thing was enormous. He could have probably done with it the most. Then we got the home console, the M8 Pro, which is significantly more expensive than the handheld. Although unlike the foot massager, looks pretty modest in terms of what it's gonna be able to run. And then what I'm banking on really being able to take all of this to the next level is the Beam 440 projector, which we paid $78 for. Um. I'm kind of blown away right now. This projector, for example, is not just a projector. It's an Android TV box, so Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube, all of that, not a problem. It's got a three watt speaker built inside of it, but also look at this stand. You can rotate to any angle. I thought it was 180 degrees. It's not, it's actually 270, because you can even shoot down. But the most impressive part of it is, look how quickly the image corrects itself. It doesn't matter what angle I'm shooting at the wall from, it's basically 100% distortion free. It kind of reminds me of Samsung's freestyle projector. And yeah, that thing had a 1080p image, this is 720p, but that was $900, this is less than 80. It's a product that really embodies that whole Jugard mentality. Like wherever you have space, stick it down, make it work. So to me, it feels like a strong nine. The Chromecast is not as good news, sadly. See, like a real Chromecast, which would be $30 or so, it can turn your non-smart TV into a smart TV by allowing you to at any point in time stream directly from your phone. But unlike a real Chromecast, there is constant flicker. And by flicker, I don't mean something that's mildly annoying. It's dysfunctional. It just keeps turning on and off. And no matter how many hours we pour into trying to fix it, it is wasted. It's starting to become pretty clear that this is a fundamental hardware issue. So I guess this is the lottery you play when you buy things that are a lot cheaper than you expect them to be. One out of 10. What about the console though? Well, it's got this absolutely awesome intro featuring the likes of fake Mario, fake Luigi, and fake Donkey Kong, I think. So when you get in, you've got a fairly janky looking home interface, but go into the game section, and this is kind of game of paradise, to be honest. This tiny little box is effectively promising you the ability to play games from any console up until the PlayStation 2, including really difficult ones to emulate like the Nintendo 64 and the PlayStation Portable. Now that is a very exciting prospect to me. It's just, it seems like they forgot to, you know, actually put the games on here. From what I can see online of other people with the same console, theirs just works. And I don't think I'm going crazy. I mean, the packaging even says built-in 10,000 plus games. So uh, unless the very definition of built-in is something different around here, we have been lied to. So I can't really give this one a rating. It does make me think though, we went to the full-on tech district in the middle of Dili and I didn't see a single PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X. I don't think gaming consoles here are nearly as much of a thing as they are in the West. I guess in the West, many people just take it for granted that yeah, me and my entire group of friends can all afford to pay $500 for a console and $70 for a game. You can do a lot with that kind of money here. And a lot of people need to do a lot with that kind of money here. So I assume that's why it's not picked up in the same way. And so it does feel like the vast majority of gamers in India are mobile gamers. Jugad, using the hardware that you've already paid for instead of buying a completely separate set of hardware. Oh, but there is good news too. Like my feet feel flipping fantastic. I was a little scared when I saw the 45 or so dollar price tag of this thing, but having used it now, I can completely see why. The thing's got proper pressure, it really gets in there. It's not the most plush or comfortable massage of money can buy. Like you can absolutely tell that this isn't the Royal Foot Servicer 10,000, but it absolutely does put the work in. I'll probably leave this one with the people who work here, but we should definitely think about getting one of these back home. And also, look at this, removable covers. 
which makes a lot of sense because you're probably going to want to wash them every now and again. And then for this handheld console, everything is quite light and cheap, but that's fine. I completely expected that. So at the start menu, you can either click Chinese or English. Interestingly, not Hindi. It's basically 520 old school retro games wherever you go. So if I click Street Fighter 2010, for example, it's actually really good. Like, yeah, the thing's plasticky, but it's comfortable. The controls are really responsive. The speakers are pretty good. And the screen is everything you need to get an authentic retro experience. Wait, Angry Bird? It's like someone's completely reprogrammed what was originally designed to be a smartphone game into something that was made for a console 40 years ago. I mean, it kind of works, but it's really bad. This is definitely Angry Birds at home. Everything's so rigid and basic, but I'm kind of impressed someone's done this. And to top the whole thing off, they are also promising six to seven hours of battery life, which is plausible. I've already run it for three the other day and it was smooth sailing. That's got to be an 8.5. Just because of how bonkers it is that you can have 520 video games plus the console designed to play them on for less than the price of two cups of coffee back home. Ramping up now to some of the most expensive items we got from here with the $100 smart backpack. Oh wow, this makes an impression. I do always love the look of these hard shell backpacks. They feel so precise and meticulous, but I'm not sold on the practicality. I just feel like the fact that they're so rigid in shape means they're naturally going to be less flexible to whatever you want to carry in the moment. But alas, this is no ordinary backpack. It needs power. So let's get our transparent power bank out. By the way, it does feel like a massive bargain. Because this is the main power bank I use. 25,600 milliamp hours, but it's $200. This, 20,000 milliamp hours, which is less, but we paid $27. So there's a micro dot display, which shows you battery percentage, LEDs too. Oh, and there's levels of brightness. That's quite a bit brighter actually than a phone flashlight. The only catch is it's not the fastest charging. This is not gonna be able to charge a laptop like this can, but it can charge a phone, or in our case, a backpack. So power bank goes in here. Oh yes, we have power. <laughs> Why am I so excited about a backpack? This is an unexpectedly slick app. Oh, that is interesting. So if I tap on one of these sets of eyes, and my bag looks like it's trying to kill me. It's actually not a bad way of keeping people away from your property. I'm actually quite impressed with the quality of animation. Like some of these actually seem to be running at a full 60 frames per second. You've got eyes that animate, you can change the shape of the eye. Oh, you've got eyes that indicate. That's actually useful. I mean, I don't imagine most people that are buying a bag like this are doing it for safety, but just the nature of having LEDs on your back is going to increase your visibility on the road. Ooh, I've just found a new menu that's got hundreds. Oh, and it's even got ones that pass through from one side of the screen to the other as if it's one continuous uninterrupted display. Ah, you can make your own. Okay, give me a minute. Oh, yes. Perfect backpack does not exist. Josh is just shaking his head disapprovingly behind the cameras. He split the image in two, but now both his eyes are like a mile apart from each other. We have fun. Okay, this was a lot better than I was expecting it to be. But fundamentally, any backpack that requires a constant power bank inside to keep it going, it's not really going to get past the novelty stage for me. On to the phones now, starting with this apparent folding iPhone made by the company Snexian. Which, hey, to be fair, is actually a bit of a looker. Oh, okay. This is not what I was expecting it to be. I mean, I don't know what I was expecting, but I was not expecting this. It's actually a feature phone with some pretty inconsistent backlighting behind the keypad, a screen that doesn't seem properly aligned. So if I click this button, for example, radio. When notifications come in, it lights up your social media logos, which is quite amusing since there is absolutely no way this thing is running Twitter. It's got a headphone jack, a USB-C port. Oh, that's interesting. Looks like a massive torch. Wow, that is exceptionally bright. I guess with most modern smartphones, it doesn't make any sense to put a torch on top because it's also going to double as your flash for your camera. But given that this phone doesn't really have to worry about that, it's actually quite practical having a flash up here and it gives it space to make it extremely powerful. I still can't see properly. I wonder if you have any games on this thing. I feel like a bit of classic snake right now would really hit the spot. Okay, it's got one game and that game is F1. Yeah guys, this is actually the new portable PlayStation 5. Oh wow, I mean, it's 
kind of adorable in its own unique way. I'm not about to start shouting Snexy from the rooftops, but this actually isn't terrible value for someone who wants a decent feature phone with a form factor that's going to attract a lot of attention. But thankfully we do have two proper smartphones. The first is an India-only variant from the global company Samsung. The second by an actual India-founded and run company. So let's start with the Samsung. This is the Galaxy M34 and I actually really like the core fundamentals, like it's well-rounded, it's comfortable to hold, it's inoffensive for the most part. I wouldn't call it much of a looker from the front with its beefy bezel and notch, but I would go as far as to say that the back is pretty. Here's my beef with it though, the bloatware situation here is perfect. Like the moment I first connected to internet, it just started freely downloading banking apps and games that I've no doubt Samsung India is getting a kickback from. There's an entire homepage widget that's literally just a rotating advert. I mean, it's not hard to get rid of, but the concept is pretty scary. There's actually so much advertising here that it makes me angry. Like every single time you just lock and unlock it, there's a new lock screen. And each lock screen is a link to a different article, with each one having a new advert literally every eight centimeters of page you scroll. Now, if you look past that, then perform and cameras do seem pretty strong for the price. And one thing that I do really like about Indian geared phones is they seem to go hard on battery. Like this thing has a 6,000 milliamp hour capacity. I wonder if that's because India is such a spec focused market and battery is one of the easiest, cheapest specs to upgrade. Either way, six out of 10. Here's what I would call the hero product though. This is the Lava Agni 2 and it's an Indian phone through and through. And this is what I was hoping to see. We paid $200 for this phone. $200, you would expect to get you a pretty noticeably cut back from flagship experience. But look at this. This is a 120 Hertz HDR10 plus AMOLED display. It is easily the best screen I've ever seen for this money. The back of the phone very much feels like the high quality frosted glass that you get on flagships. And the software is very close to stock Android 13. This thing's giving me major Google Pixel energy and almost no bloatware, which after the last phone is a nice change of pace. As for the camera, Let's test it. So while we've been here in India, obviously videos can't stop. We still got to post on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and importantly in this case, TikTok. TikTok's banned in India. It'll just say you have no internet connection if you try and use it. And so this is yet another one of those cases where by using Surfshark VPN, which redirects your internet traffic to trick sites into thinking you're someone and somewhere else, saves the day. I already use Surfshark all the time, whether it's to watch TV shows that I wouldn't have been able to watch or reduce the anxiety from joining what appears to be a pretty dodgy Wi-Fi connection. But the craziest part of it is that it's barely cost me anything. See, with the code BOSS, Surfshark is less than $3 a month for an unlimited number of accounts with six months extra for free and a 30 day money back guarantee. And given that you can actually use Surfshark to save you money when buying expensive things, like the tickets to get here, that alone has been worth more to me than the subscription cost in totality. Oh yeah, and this phone overall feels like a nine to me.